Hey there, it's Jim and Debbie with episode 71 of the Midday Minute. Hey, nice to be here next to you. Are you excited? So excited. Because? Because it's ENF month. And it's a very special episode of the Midday Minute and a very special setting. We are coming at you from the Grand Reception Hall in the Elks Veterans Memorial to celebrate with you ENF month every October, right? The whole month. Why oh, would really? we celebrate the ENF actually? 365 days a year. Well, 24 7, 365, right? But it's special but attention this in October. Month is put aside for everyone to celebrate. I feel like I ought to know why we do this in October, and I believe it's because that's where uh, Mally first gave voice to his idea for uh, um, you know, an Elks National Foundation while he was uh, speaking at a lodge somewhere. But I could be wrong yeah. about that. I don't know. Well, let's stick with that. It's a good story. It sounds good, right? Yeah. Good origin story. Yeah. So, uh, what's going on? Oh, nothing. Okay, <laughs> if you like this episode. No. We said we were going to keep it brief, but. No. We're gonna, yeah, Just right. Kidding. I was thinking, people will recall we were here two years ago, right? For ENF to you. We yeah. sat here, did a lot of the. Um, we were a little bit farther apart there. back we, then. We were farther we were... apart, and when we weren't on camera, we had our masks on and everything. Right. But you did that great intro where you set up this building here, right? Oh, the memorial, yes. the yeah. Peace Memorial. Um, dedicated to the Elks who lost their lives in, in World War I. In 1926, this building opened. And then two short years later, 1928, John F. Malley had his vision, right? Right. Of a more stately mansion, right? A more a, stately a, mansion. A monument uh, that would grow stronger with time. And it's just so remarkable to me that we're sitting here in 2022 and it, it still rings so true and it's an amazing thing to have um this what is he, he referred to it as an army for the service to mankind that's right and uh today fueling that army probably the biggest thing fueling it is the community investments program i yeah. think he would be pretty happy with that uh realization of his uh vision absolutely um we got a deadline coming up in the, in the sip though right yeah, we have a deadline coming up in the SIP, but it's still a few months away, so you still have some time to apply for your grants if you haven't already. And that deadline is um, January 17th, 2023. Um, so this is the first year that it has not been December, in a while it hadn't been the end of December, or did we do that last year? This is year as well? the second year. Okay. Um, Works better for and the, it's for so the staff. Much, Works it's better, better for the volunteers. Actually, I think for everybody. For everybody. <laughs> so, so we like to call a win-win-win. A win-win-win, right. right? So that deadline, um, though it is a couple months away, it does come up, you know, fast. We know how things get going once it's mid-October, right. Right? right? So, if you haven't already, please get on the dashboard and apply for your gratitude grant if you've qualified for one, your Beacon grant, and your Spotlight grant. Uh, last year, 81% of the lodges used at least one SIP grant, which is so great. But that means one in five, almost one in five did not. So do not be that one lodge. Go right here uh, to get more information about the SIP and get started. Yeah, we don't want any lodge to leave money on the table. And that, lodge, that money is specifically for the lodge to use in the community to meet a need. So we all know there are plenty of needs out there. And last year, uh, the average lodge received $7,340 in SIP grants, uh, an average of 2.73 of our grants. Um, and then for every $1,000 we granted last year, we put five Elks in the field serving their community for around 26 hours of service, which is really cool also. I think that that's something that everybody can be really, really proud of. And it's re it really is what Mally was talking about when yeah. he said he wanted to build something that would fuel this mighty army in service of mankind. Yeah, so. I love it. What else? Is that it? Oh no, there's so much more. <laughs> we have the MBS uh, deadline coming up, of course. So and that's the, sooner than the SIP deadline. Oh yeah, right? that's a yeah. lot sooner than the okay. SIP deadline. The most valuable students started on August 1st and that deadline is November 14th. So if you know any high school seniors, get them to apply. Get them to apply and then, uh, then that program shifts to the Elks as uh, judging will begin a short time after that, right? Mm -hmm. On December 2nd. And also on December 2nd, I don't know, I think you know this because of course, you are Jim O'Kelly, the director of the Elks National Foundation, but we are having our, uh, an in-person Scholar Advisory Board meeting also December 2nd through the 4th. So it's been Here. a while. It's been a hot minute since we've been able to do that. So. Yeah, it's nice to 
see things kind of returning to normal with our mm -hmm, programming. Mm -hmm. And look forward to the announcement of the two new uh, freshman SAB members. So that will happen very soon. Okay. Yeah. So that's going on. And then what, what about the legacy? That uh, I feel like we're bouncing around with our deadlines. The legacy. Uh, it keeps people on their toes. Up. Yes, right, right. Stay with us. <laughs> uh, that's coming up in February? February 6th. So forever in a day, the deadline was on a Friday afternoon. Somehow one of us wised up and we're like, that should be on a Monday. So we give people that extra weekend to get stuff in. It's Monday, February 6th, 2023. Yep, and as we uh, announced, I think um, in the last episode of the show, we said that we were, I'm shifting gears here, by the way. It's all right. There should be like a sound effect of me shifting <laughs> gears. Uh, we announced on the last episode of the show that we were 98% certain that we had Wintrust secured for next year's Hoop Street Finals, which are on April 22nd. That's right. We now have the contract in hand. So we are officially 100% certain, right? <laughs> yes. We, we upped that by 2%. We are 100% certain. certain that we will be back at Wintrust. Really excited about that. So we spent so much time and effort and energy last year promoting early and often to get people to Chicago to celebrate for, for the 50th anniversary of the right. program. But there's no need to put, you know, hit the brakes on that. Let's keep promoting it and let's get people to join us in Chicago. We had 753 people attend the finals last year, which is our biggest size since we've been keeping track. Uh, but you know what, Wintrust can, uh, Accommodate a lot more than that. It would be great if we were in uh, quadruple digits. That's right. I'd you settle know, for the low quadruple digits, but if we could get to the quadruple digits, that would be uh, that would be outstanding. You know, we had a big push, right, to pack the place last mm -hmm. year. We're going to keep it up. So if you're watching and you're interested and you're looking, even if you're not, you know, if you don't have a, a kid from your lodge that ends up it's one of the 72, yeah. most lodges won't. Um, still come join us. It's a ton of fun. We would at least like to pack the part of the place that's on camera because we once again will be doing a, um, a live stream. Yeah. Uh, we're going to broadcast again on YouTube uh, the finals and this time I think we're going to have two teams broadcasting. That's the plan. Yeah, it's going to be great. That's the plan. It's going to be good stuff. Yeah, so again, we would love for you to be here with us in person, but if you can't, we're going to bring it to you live. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what else? We did it. We did. We did. We did. <laughs> 5,000 members yes. of the Fidelity Club. We finally did that. You know, we set that goal four years ago during the uh, sesquicentennial, 150th anniversary of the Elks. Say that. Five and so past. we set a goal of increasing membership in the Fidelity Club by 150% for the 150th anniversary. Amazing. It took us four years, but we did it. We're, uh, we're now at more than 5,000 members, which is outstanding. That's, yeah. It's really... Everybody is so proud of that, and I know our donor services and development team have worked so hard to make that happen. Um, so onward to 10,000, right? Onward to 10,000. Onward to here first. <laughs> Let's keep it going. What else you got for our uh, viewers? Um, well, you hit all the salient points that I wanted to say, um, dates I wanted to bring up, programs I wanted to promote, um, but I am excited to tell you that we have an El a new Elk Scholar Fellow starting um, this week, actually. Well, that's so her name is Raleigh Curry, and she lives in Raleigh. That's what are the odds, <laughs> so, right? Raleigh and Raleigh. Raleigh and Raleigh. Um, she's from North Carolina, and um, we're really excited to have her on board. She's gonna. It, and there's a trip coming, right? There's a trip coming soon, actually. Um, details will um, be forthcoming, but the first week of January is usually when we have our our winter. Schol Elk Scholar Service trip, so yeah. we're looking forward to that. So, which reminds me too that we just released uh, a couple weeks ago a video from the Seattle trip last spring, right? Mm -hmm. Last so spring. So we'll put a link up here. Go check that out if you haven't seen that one already. That's right. That happened right before Memorial Day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're we're really excited to welcome Raleigh into. You know, she's already an Elk Scholar. She's already part of the Elks family, but she's going to be joining us on staff to help us for this year. Um, she'll be, you know, obviously in charge of um, our Elk Scholar engagement and the three trips that will happen between January and July. Is there anything else? There is one more thing. Those bells were to wish you a happy birthday, which is also happening this week.
It's, some would say it's the most magical time of year, enough month, my birthday. Yep. <laughs> In that order. Yep. Uh, I appreciate that. And I think that about wraps it up, right? Checks all the boxes I have on my notes. Me too. Uh, if you have liked this episode of the Midday Minute, give us a thumbs up. If not, a thumbs down. Either way, share it far and wide with your social network so other people can learn about these fantastic programs. Either way, if you're not already subscribing, tap that bell. Smash that bell. <laughs> well, I think first you got to tap the button, then you <laughs> smash that bell so you'll be notified every time we post new content like Hoop Shooting the Breeze, which is back for a third season. That just uh, premiered last week, right? Mm -hmm. Check that out if you haven't seen that already. McKenna has a new co-host, Nathan Springberg. Yeah, yeah. They're uh, stealing that from our playbook, huh? Totally. All right. <laughs> We're trendsetters here at the Midday Minute. Yep. Okay. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in, and we will catch you next time, right? Take care. Bye.